Let's zoom in on all the tax highlights that uh, Praveen Gordon mentioned today. And I think, Ernie, let's start off with you because you're the, you're the expert in the room today. Well, the, the, tax, uh, the tax underrun uh, is not as, 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 as severe as we thought it would be. It's more than what he predicted in the, in, in the previous budget, uh, but uh, not as bad as everybody thought. 70 billion, approximately 70 billion underrun. So um, to make up the underrun, what does he do? He can either collect more, try to collect more, which he uh, more stringent measures. For example, uh, uh, cutting down the tax avoidance schemes. The um, tax avoidance schemes, uh, it's quite a few of them that have been identified as, as ones that, that will be He's attacked. He's very vocal about it for many years now. Very vocal, mm -hmm. very vocal. You know, things like uh, protected cell companies, mm -hmm. uh, transfer pricing, uh, dividend particular types of dividend funds where interest is 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 paid and or interest income is converted into uh, uh, f uh, tax beneficial foreign dividend income it's going to go after those so quite a lot uh, coming through we the devil will of course be in the detail we've had over the last couple of years seen quite a quite a major jump in the complexity of the tax system and uh, we thought perhaps this year there might be a little bit of a breathing space <laughs> to try to consolidate but with all these new anti-avoidance measures, the, the tax system becomes ever more complex. No luck there, hey? No. Uh, Adam, uh, looking at the anti-avoidance uh, systems that will be put in place, uh, your views on that, do you think it's going to be a positive going forward? And do you think that Praveen Gordon can get it right? I think it's been very good in collecting taxes over the last while. I think it's also very important that this is part of a global phenomenon where tax avoidance and tax havens are being focused on to pull back, especially from the very wealthy, to pull back taxes and so that you can reduce the deficits and continued spending without harming the poorer sectors of uh, society. So I think it's a very, very important um, element of collecting taxes. Looking at uh, the, the carbon tax that's also been implemented on, on vehicles, do you think it's going to be pushed further into other sectors, for instance, the big companies that are massive carbon emitters? Uh, Adam, could we get your view on that? Sure. If you look at what happened in last year's budget, they actually introduced a tax deduction for carbon um, reductions. So companies like Omnia, um, have actually implemented this over the last few years where they now sell those carbon emission uh, uh, certificates and they get a tax deduction. So that's very good for the environment. And then for those people who drive larger cars, larger SUVs, faster cars, I think the new tax on carbon emissions, um, I think it's very, very good. It helps with fuel efficiency. It helps with um, the environment. And it, again, so it broadens the tax base to ensure that um, the poorer members of society, uh, um, you know, it's basically uh, spreads a tax to the higher end of the market. Mm. It seems like we're modernizing our budgets and, and really looking at the green aspects, um, obviously, because Jacob Zuma has set uh, goals for South Africa to cut emissions dramatically by 2025. Do you think we're going to see more stringent rules coming through on that front? On, environment uh, ta on mm. our environmental taxes, uh, I think, uh, without a doubt. And it's also, uh, it's a sexy type of tax, you know. It's, mm -hmm. it's kind of been green and, and let's, let's stop carb, uh, you know, the carbon emissions and, and global warming. But in the end, it's, it's raising revenue and it's, it's a nice, it's nice way to do it. Mm -hmm. I'm not quite sure what the car companies will say. But I think it'll give a, probably give a boost to the second-hand car market because these taxes are on new vehicles. Mm -hmm. So that is actually a well-needed boost at the moment. And gas guzzlers, of course. Yeah, at, at the end of the day, it's just about raising more tax. It's not really about the environment. environment. Absolutely That's not. Because if they were really concerned you know? about the environment, <laughs> They would improve the grade of fuel that we use in, in SA. There are many fuel efficient cars that you actually cannot sell in South Africa because the quality of the fuel is so poor. So don't be too, too f uh, uh, fooled about the whole green issue. Um, you've also got to remember that the minister's in a very difficult spot here, um, a little bit between a rock and a hard place, in that his, his appointment is a political appointment. We tend to view things pretty from an economic aspect. And I had one of our very junior analysts do the mind-numbing job of counting the words he said the most during his speech. And the word he said the most was tax and tax collection. Right? The word he said second most was jobs. So I think that's very indicative of, of where the focus is going to be going forward. Effectively, we now have the Commissioner of SARS, ex-Commissioner of SARS, running the Ministry of Finance. So we're going to see huge, 
huge crackdowns on, on the anti-avoidance and on tax mm -hmm. collection. Well, you and create jobs and you obviously increase your tax collections as mm -hmm. well. I think that's quite important as well because if they don't actually crack down the tax avoidance and they don't find new um, taxpayers or, or be able to increase their revenues in that manner, then the can's going to fall on the average taxpayer. And that means that the average person's African economy is going to have a significantly increased burden placed upon them, which in turn is going to come back and hit quite hard at consumer spending and GDP growth. So this is actually quite a necessary measure. And don't bet against him getting it right, getting it, not getting it right, because he did an excellent job in broadening the actual tax base. Um, and, and one's only got to look at the, at the very good job he did there. Um, those people that have been adopting these very sophisticated anti-avoidance schemes uh, better take this opportunity to come, come, come clean. I think the, uh, we, we just need to, to get a, a, a context to, to, to cutting down and, and combating tax avoidance. Of course, tax avoidance is completely legal. You know, the, the issues that, that, that have to be combated are those schemes that take it too far. Now, on the issue of, of tax compliance, there, there was a note in the, budget, the detailed budget review that tax compliance is slipping, which is, uh, which is a, a remarkable admission compared to the, the, the great strides that have been made in the last 10 years to improve tax compliance. Now, why has tax compliance started slipping? There are various, uh, I have because a- Because there's no real incentive? Is well, that the problem? I think people are, you know, there's a groundswell of disillusionment uh, to service delivery. And what am I getting back oh. for my tax rand? I think uh, one of, probably the third most used word, uh, I would guess, would be service delivery uh, and, and making government departments, government ministers a little more accountable for what they do because currently there's, there's, there's a perception that there's an acceptance of incompetence, lack of accountability and bad service delivery. Now if people don't see themselves after becoming more tax compliant because it's the right thing to do etc cetera, etc cetera, but getting very little service delivery in return there's going to start be, there's going to be a slippage so I think it's an important thing that the minister is starting to, to look at, at better service delivery more accountability. Adam, would you agree with that? Is, do you think it's about uh, service delivery at this stage? Are South Africans feeling a little bit uh, frustrated with the fact that the policies are in place, but there's a problem with implementation? I think it's very important if you see what's happening in the townships around the country, in the rural areas, there's been lots of uh, violence in those areas because of the lack of de delivery. If you look at the shanty towns, we need to solve those problems, and we can solve those problems by a number of ways. Um, the easiest way is to hand out and give, uh, give out uh, um, uh, um, money to people like we're doing very uh, easily. But the important thing is we need to create housing, we need to create great jobs for them, we need to create sustainability, and we need to provide high quality education for everybody so that you can be self-sustaining and that's really the, the, the task of government over the next couple of years to ensure that we get the service delivery in the municipalities at the grassroots level and where people can start feeling really, really positive. If you look at what we've done with the World Cup, if we've looked at what we've done with the roads, it's been a great story. It means that we can do it and we just need to focus and making sure that we spread that broadly and get a positive spirit um, and then we may get back to people not slipping out of the tax loop and paying, uh, paying their taxes and uh, you know, being happy to pay taxes. I think it's important to pay your taxes because we've got the hospitals we need to pay, we've got the schools we need to, uh, to sort out. And so I think it's the onus on all of us to kind of encourage uh, delivery but continue to pay our taxes. Adam, one billion rand allocated to uh, the likes of uh, 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 looking at the rural development sector there and hopefully another further one billion rand will be given by Tokyo Sehwale and that's of course Pravin Gordon's wish uh, but your view on that I mean do you think it's enough money that we're pumping into this sector should we not be focusing more money and more funds into rural development rather than perhaps giving uh, more grants out which is at around 12.2 billion rand? Sure I think rural development is very very important because Part of uh, the issue of urban, uh, the issues in the urban area is the migration from people from the rural area to the urban area, and a lot of that migration has been as a result of poor service delivery, poor development in those rural areas. So, as a country, to broaden the development in our country and make our country less vulnerable to swings, we really need to focus on getting the rural areas to work and people to reside in those areas 
and to ensure that you have a sustainable economy throughout uh, the country.